Roll the dice, uh, Matt. See what I did. Oh, I'm, I'm trying. Do you do the one yeah. at a time? You can hold down shift and drag, drag a box around, and then you can you can do multiple things. And then what? Then press R. Press R. Right, got it. Oh no, fuck. <laughs> what did you do? I'm just... <laughs> Alright, shift. Uh, then, bruh. Yeah, that's the one. So, we got a one and a five. So, the story will be how we cheated death and still got home in time for tea. That sounds good. I say. I say, yes. So, I everybody needs to ball. draw six cards and drag them down to your hand. Which is the blue thing. And then one patron card as well. Come on, before I do that. Uh, they've already shuffled. It's ran. It's randomised. So there's. Um, so the the way you can do it. So all all cards are loaded in as objects uh, in a group, and then you add a um, you add a randomizer to that group, and so it's the randomizer that's on the table fifty times or a uh, hundred times or whatever, um, and then so you never get a chance of getting anything out twice. Most so you can excellent. you can drag them around in your hand to organize them by suit and whatnot. And how do you zoom on your? Oh, you can press you Z. You can also double click on a card as well, and that will also uh, on the, the card is on the table. But you can double click on it, and it'll zoom it full screen. So I am blue, and you are green and yellow. That's cool. That works. Not a problem. So, um, shall I get a start then? Yeah, Matt, you go first. Show us what to do. Then kick it over me, maybe, and then yeah, I'll go last. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. We can do so that. So, do we just interject at any point? Yeah, any point. So it's it's storytelling. You can inter interject at any point. Um, and. Um, it's just, it's, I guess it's just about how far you want to let the story run, I guess. Um, okay. But obviously, you've got to give somebody... So if you're pl if you're the one that's playing the cards, then you've got to give somebody enough time to sort of um, interject before you sort of play your next card. Um, and if they, right. if they kind of don't, then it's their own lookout, to be fair. So, how we cheated death and still got home in time for tea. Let's think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six cards. So, after work, I, uh, I decided it'd be a really, really funny idea to go down to the Houses of Parliament, see what was going on, because, you know, why not? It's, uh, it's a fun place to be down there. It's... I've got to say, I think you're mistaken. <laughs> it was Scotland Yard you went to. Because it was. Of the long arm of the law. Oh, no. it. You've taken Scotland Yard. So if you put that over over my card yeah. or whatever, and then we just you can rotate things with the E, e and Q rotate cards around as well. Uh, locked on a, on a, on an axis as well, which is quite cool. So yeah, so okay, yeah. Obviously, I was mistaken. You can say they, they kind of look the same. To be fair, <laughs> they've both got towers, windows, and uh, guards. I guess. So yeah. Um, <laughs> so Michael, you get that card. This goes into the discard pile of AA somewhere. That's now a discard pile. Um, and you get to keep that card in there. So that is the places uh, card. So you get the places benefactor as well uh, for the time being. And then it's your go. Obviously, you don't. I don't draw back up again until. Um, start my next turn so any cards that i haven't played i get to play against other people right so and would michael because he's used the card draw up now or uh no uh if i guess he would yeah start of his turn now he, he would now draw back up to uh to his cards yeah i'll just draw one yeah so let's just pull that on there and do i carry on your your story um, you can do well. Yeah, I mean, it all works. If it, it's a bit like glooming that it does, it does, it does help if it's kind of all inter, inter 
thingy. Yeah, J Jamie, the designer of the game, says yes. Yes, you must carry on the story. Yeah, well. What if I don't want to, Jamie? What if I'm not in the mood? <laughs> it was. We were at Scotland Yard because we'd been on our way early to Lambeth, Lambeth Workhouse. Terrible place. Awful place. But I was, uh, I was there for one reason and one reason alone. I looked at the pathetic smudges of a man and I thought, I really want to kiss. Just, just, just one of these chaps. Just, just tender, tender if, moment. If you uh, bring them into, into the middle of the table, sorry. Yeah, bring the mood up. Bit of a, bit of a smoochy. Bit of a smoochy. And it has to be lower. Has to be lower. Has to be lower. Uh, and I, I was talking to one guy, Carl, with a K, and I said, "Do you want a kiss?" And he said, "No." I said, "What do I want to do?" Why don't you take this to the Houses of Commons? Put it, pop it in there. Dynamite. Say? Jeez. Oh, well, I say. Well, I say, I said. <laughs> Houses of Commons? Some sort of revolutionary bunk. So, uh, me and Carl, we uh, got into a, a handsome cab. And we headed off. Towards uh, ah, well, you see, I heard it wasn't actually a handsome cab. It was actually, I mean, to be fair, I can see how you got confused, but it was actually a penny farthing. Yeah. That's why you mentioned room. it, it was a little <laughs> bit less comfortable than it was. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. They're quite uh, easily mixed up. Yeah. Well, it was a bumpy ride, and I really resented the chap charging me money. I'm not surprised. So, unfortunately, yeah, you lose all these cards. I've got a funny story about a penny farthing. I'm sure we're going to hear it. Uh, this is told by someone else. Uh, him, and his, uh, him and his friend were in the park, in Holland Park in London, and his friend needed to go to the toilet. So he was peeing against the tree, and a guy on a penny farthing rode by, and he fell off his bike, <laughs> and it was quite comical. <laughs> and my friend was pointing and laughing and his friend noticed and ran over and started pointing and laughing at the guy who recoiled because uh, the friend's penis was still hanging out because he just had a piss. <laughs> well, <laughs> can you imagine? I've fallen off my bike. Oh my God, there's someone laughing. Where have you gone? Happy Hanukkah. Yeah. That story ended in a way I wasn't expecting. So someone <laughs> laughed. <laughs> Happy Hanukkah. Happy <laughs> Hanukkah. So, uh, who takes the story on? Is um, it me? It's now Matt's turn, yeah? Yeah. Right, so... Um... I, uh... Right. And it can be any number, then. Any number, obviously the so the the chances of somebody else having a lower card is greater the higher card the higher numbered card that you play. Um, but obviously there's still eighty one cards in the deck, so yeah. the like obviously Michael managed to play some some fairly high places and objects and things like that. Um, so it just kind of depends on the look of the draw, really. Okay, uh, well, being uh, an incorrigible rogue. I decided that uh, riding on this penny farthing was not to my liking. <laughs> so I decided to uh, contact uh, a serving wench who could come and uh, get me uh, a handsome cab that belonged to Isabella Beaton. <laughs> Now, Isabella Beaton, I met after sending some seditious writings to her via the uh, the Times newspaper. <laughs> the problem was her husband, who had won a Victoria Cross in the Crimea, was uh, very, very angry at me for these seditious writings. And he, uh, he was the one who turned up in the handsome crowd. Crab, not it's not a handsome crab, just to be clear. It was a handsome cab. Uh, <laughs> she left her shellfish at home. And he jumped at me, brandishing his knife. 
that he kept on his person at all times and shouted, For Queen and Country! Wow. And uh, I've run out of cards, except for my benefactor. So, uh, except for your patron. So, yeah, you only, you only have to play two cards in your turn, but you've you've kind of played all of them, and I don't think anybody's got anything that can that can that can dispute what you said. Oh, that was amazing, said. amazing. Word. So, um, you you get to keep all those all those cards. So if you put them into sort of just stack them in suits, um, and you probably better rotate them around. I would think as well. Um, no, stop spinning, card. <laughs> Doing disco? Oh no! Do I win anything? Do I get any of yeah, the? Yeah, you get you get all sorts. You get all sorts if you bear, bear with me a sec. Oh. So what was um? Oh, what did you do to weapon benefactor? I don't know. So you've got um. Let's have a look. So you 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 get the motive um benefactor, and nobody else can take that off you because you've played ten. Uh, you get the crime benefactor. Uh, you get. Servant so I get, I get a penny for. Sorry. No, uh, no, no. I'm, I'm an untidy scoundrel. No, you get the person benefactor for the time being because you've played the two. Uh, have you got anything that's not got a thing above it? No. The yellow, so you, the object. So you get two, uh, two bonus pennies for your uh, ten for your motive. Um, and you get two for your object as well. And you get the object uh, benefactor from myself. Oh. Because uh, I only played a four, and it's, uh, unless somebody's got a ten, uh, they won't be able to do that. That, that was amazing. That was good. Good tell. Good tell. <sighs> Gone. That was. <laughs> that was epic. <laughs> I am a writer, so I should be all right at this game. All right, haha! I see what you did there. <laughs> well, 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 well. So, so do we roll again, or do we get? No, no, this, you... no, this, 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 this story carries on and, and goes where it goes. So it could go anywhere at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so, the handsome cab we thought had Isabella Bean or whatever her name is. Isabella Beaton. It's actually got her angry husband who won a Victoria Cross, who's jumped at us with his knife and shouted no. for Queen and Country. Oh yes, terrifying man. It's funny. Uh, it's funny you should say for Queen and Country because uh, around the corner in the, in that actual handsome cab that we ended up getting, who should appear? But the crown jewels upon the head of David Livingston. I quite know how he got them. Tish and pish. Tish and pish. That's higher. Oh. That's higher. You can't. You can't beat oh. the one. Oh no, you can't beat one. <laughs> Come back. Come back with the tish and pish. Still tish and pish. <laughs> Livingston him a crown jewels. The man's a fraud. <laughs> a fraud, you say? No. So well, I can't play anything, can I? I've not got any cards. No, you've not got any cards. No, no, no. Um, obviously, David Livingston parading around with the crown jewels, crown jewels upon his head. You would say that that he had committed quite a large four par. And which uh, is sorry, a what? Four par. Faux par. That too. It's faux. Faux. Faux par. I sound Londonish now. That's funny, isn't it? <laughs> no, that's just the correct pronunciation. The pronunciation. Yes. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... Who should he have upon his arm but a scullery maid who's usually a woman employed to wash clothes, dishes and do any other household dirty work. So what was she doing with David Livingston? We don't know. Hmm. So you take... Take them back and you take some of the cards. Yeah, so I take these. I get the peril uh, benefactor, which cannot be taken away from me. Um, and object as well. That's object, isn't it? Yep. I just I feel like I'm nowhere near as good at this thing as you two. 
<laughs> I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't say us two, but nevertheless. <laughs> oh, bum. Sorry, I'm just having issues now. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You good. Four right. bonus pennies. So, the only issue I've come across myself with this is that, obviously, um, the certain patron cards, like is this one, where, play at the start of your turn, choose another player and look at their cards, take one and give them a penny. Um, and obviously, there's no easy way to do that. Uh, if you're in a two-player game, then the person could kind of put out all of their cards out from their hand, but then everybody would see it if you had more than two players. So it's whether or not we kind of take cards like that out of the game for the online play. I don't know. Jamie will probably have a thing on that. Like that. Where you can look at someone else's cards. Yeah, it's not a... Can you private message? Um, don't think so. <clears throat> you could possibly do it with other technology. But there's no other way to... Lock a pigeon. Yeah, carry a pigeon. RFC one one four nine. So, Livingston with the scullery Livingston. maid upon his arm, wearing you the damn brown jewels. You damn fool! Take that! Take those ratners off your head and get out of a bloody handsome cab. I said, go to Whitechapel. And Livingston says, "Says Whitechapel." So I kick Livingston out of the cab, leave him behind, and I'm off. Being is pursued by the knife wielding, angry, angry man. And I'm on and I'm driving. And I go straight to the Tower of London. Tower of London, I say to the man, to the to handsome cab man. He says, What's up with the Tower of London? I say, I'm glad you ask. And we pull up, pull up, and I pull up opposite. Opposite the knife man, and he comes out of his handsome cab. He wields a knife, and I'm wielding a 68 pound Lancaster weapon. And I shoot my cannon at him and damn well scare the life out of him. I've heard about your um, 68 pound Lancaster gun, <laughs> it's, uh, its reputation is, uh, is astounding. Well, <laughs> that's what happened. That's where I passed the story on. Oh, it's me. Yeah. Right, yeah. so I need to draw. So I'm going to take. I need more than one card. So um... if you scroll up on your mouse wheel, you can take multiple cards or multiple uh, things. Oops. Did you play any high cards there? You played got... a seven, didn't you? Yeah, I've got seven. A place, I think I might have. I've got weapon. Got that one as well. What's what's highest place? Uh, highest place is with. I don't know. Who's got who's got place out? Uh, you have. You have already. Yeah, you've got okay, the. I've... Oh, can I say what have I done? So you get a bonus yeah. penny for your seven. Um. Penny for you, sir. And do I get anything for my massive gun? For my massive weapon? What was that? It was an eight. You get uh, you get another bonus penny for that, sir. Yes. There you go. Most excellent. And okay, then, where was the story left? Uh, Sorry, I got... you were at the Tower of London, having shot a cannon at an angry man who was upset. You writing letters to his wife. Oh. Right. Well. uh... My plan had been to take this lovely wife to the Savoy, uh, where uh, she could help me with my addiction to uh, sexual intercourse. <laughs> the, pl the plan was uh, I would feed her some deviled kidneys. 
for her dinner. And maybe uh, I wouldn't learn, end up in poverty uh, from spending all the money on the food of the Tavoy. Uh, I really wanted to marry her, but the problem was that would lead to bigamy in both our cases. And there, I was hoping that I might be saved from such a mistake by a wonderful butler. A butler, you say? Uh, it yes. was merely a stable lad who was masquerading as a butler that night who had the day off. Oh, no. <laughs> so what do you get, then? I get this, well, I, 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 I get this, I get this stable lad back. <clears throat> and uh, all the other uh, cards go into the discard pile. Oh. Oh, my God, you lost a whole hand. I did. Yeah, he was too cocky. That's what he I was too say. cocky. I had too much to drink. <laughs> yeah. I've had half a brew dog on many bodies. <laughs> so I need to draw back up to seven. See what the case is. Ooh. That was an amazing round again. Absolutely amazing. Yep. Work. Ah. So, obviously the, the shenanigans of the Savoy and deviled uh, kidneys, deviled kidneys, and everything that was going on there. It was uh, it was quieter to do really. And um, with the stable lad masquerading as a butler. Who should come out and find him doing so? But the valet. Oh, not the valet. The valet. So the valet is a gentleman's gentleman. One's manservant. The original Batman. So why not? It turns out that it wasn't actually devil... Uh, devil the devil liver, did we say? Kidneys? Liver? Kidneys. 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 It was potted crab, which is might, might explain why we had some confusion around the handsome cab earlier on. Yeah. Just, you know, so there crab. was the handsome crab. Uh, yeah, there is the Watch handsome crab dressed, dressed. Now, the reason that the crab ended up on the plate was because he suffered with disillusionment of life. Because he's quite apt that sometimes life wants us all met to uh, to scream onion sauce, onion sauce. Yes, and it turns out we weren't in the Savoy after all. No, no, we were in Billingsgate Fish Market, which explains the smell. How did we get here? Back what to the crab. crab? <laughs> and how the hell are we going to get home? And where are we dicing with death? There's too many weapons, it's not good. Yeah, that's, that's me done. Right. There's not to pick on him, that. Cool. <clears throat> servant of eight. Who's got the servant card? What's the highest servant card that's out at the moment? Um, you, I think. Ten. Uh, so no, it's gone in the discard, isn't it? So I've got the servant. So it's you, I think. Thank you. Uh, potted crab is a three on tea time. I think it was a higher tea time one, isn't it? And. Let's get a fish market as well. Ooh, all the cards. So there's bonus pennies at the end of the game as well if you've got the most cards in a suit. Where were we again? We were at Billingsgate Fish Market. We're in Billingsgate Fish Market. There's a strange smell, some potted crab, uh, the valet, and um, yeah. I found a man. And he said the word flapdoodle. <laughs> flap doodle, you shouting flap doodle. Flap doodle, I was very confused. Not polite society. And I looked over, and I found the man. And I looked at him. And by Jove, he's an overstuffed walrus. This was very confusing. Uh, his large mutton shop sideburns gave him the appearance of walrus. No, it was an actual walrus. And it was only then, it was only then I realised that I had consumed a huge quantum of opium. That is too much. Too much for a man. Too much for any man. 
That's what I was telling uh, the Munchie. Abro Cream. Abro, too much opium. I'm seeing, I'm dreaming of being writing seditious letters to a lady. I'm dreaming of finding cannons of David Livingston, wearing the crown jewels. In reality, it's you and I in our leatherback chairs in this here hellfire club. And that is where I shall end. Right, I should get some cards then. So I shall take these chaps. Flapdoodle is quite a rude word. Flapdoodle is amazing. I'm, I'm quite disgusted, actually. <laughs> Sorry, because I called Lucy a flap doodle the other night when we played. So, what, what, where was that left? I got distracted by text uh, cool message. Uh, everything, we're in the Hellfire Club. In right. the back chairs with, um, with the uh, Munshi Abdul Kareem having taken opium with him. Okay, let me just have a quick look at my cards. Uh. Oh my god, sorry. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm just looking at these and just thinking. So, uh, Abdul, uh, who was originally, I don't want to play three cards at once, thank you very much. Uh, who was originally a gardener, uh, had uh, had been arrested not that long ago for being out at night with a blackened face. <laughs> and uh, sure. and uh, when really what had happened was he had been uh, standing too close to his local fire wearing flammable clothing. And uh, um, um, can I play a benefactor card? Uh, the patron card. You, yeah. Generally, you got to play at the start of your turn. Oh, sorry. Uh, what is it that it says? Oh no, it says for the rest of your turn, every weapon card you successfully play. It. Yeah, now you can play that now. Okay. Because the ones that you got to so, play at the start of your turn say so. Okay, sorry. So let's just say I've done it. I've only got one weapon card. It's a money money. So anyway, uh. Yes, so he'd been near his flammable clothing. And when his clothes uh, caught fire, he said, Lick spittle. <laughs> and started flailing around the room and Poppy went outside. Cock. Poppy oh, no. Cock. oh, no. He said, he said Hobbaddy Who. <laughs> I call. He was, talking I, about, I, he was talking about some, some pimply upside of a young man. Hobbaddy Who. Bloody hot very who, he said. Well, I, that's not what happened at all. I heard he came out and said, You mangy cur. Hard to hear when there's fire going on. <laughs> and his clothes are on fire. His clothes are on fire, that's not good. Oh, bloody man. <laughs> Alright, so we lose... Everything. Everything goes in the bin. Gosh, I need to draw some more cards. Down to one. So you draw up to seven? Uh, or... Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, you're meant to draw up to six. I've drawn, I've drawn seven. That's not right. Uh... Hang on. Where is the shuffle? There it is. <clears throat> Alright, there's one back in there now. Cool, so... <sighs> Being called a mangy cur is... often the, uh, the highlight of one's night, to be fair. How can you come back from that? Well, to try and sort out the atmosphere in the room. I had no choice but to offer gin to all in the room! Gin for everybody. Mother's ruin. Ah, gin is fun. We like the gin. It's good. <laughs> Obviously, after quite a, a skin full of gin, um, we still had to get home. And our bellies were full of potted crab 
that old liver. And gin. Gin and opium, of course, of course. And on the way home, we thought we were heading for a shortcut. What happened was we actually ended up in Newgate Prison, which is hell on earth. I heard seven men caught typhus there and died of typhus. Not good. Not good at all. And why did we get put in Newgate Prison, you ask? Well, Bob, who was accompanying us on this, like, we picked him up somewhere on the way home. He's not a member of the club. He, he wouldn't fit in here. We were scrumping in somebody's garden for apples to make more gin. Nice name for apple theft. Yes. Something. Nice yes. name. I like apples. Especially if they're made into gin. It's good. Who arrested us? Well, it was the Prince Consort's own rifle brigade. Personally, I thought it was a little bit... Uh, no, over. I, I think I think you'll find he didn't have uh, he didn't have uh, a rifle brigade. It was a gentleman with a cutthroat razor. Oh, yes, there was too much gin. You see, far, far too much that? gin. So I take that back. That all goes away. Sorry, Matt. That's okay. At least we still got the gin. Yes, gin for all. <laughs> wow. The gin took us. To places we we'd never been. We places we've never been. And what we did is we, we, we looked in our pockets and we found a shiny sixpence. And there's only one place for a man. A little bit... A little bit down his luck. Not a lot of money can can go for to do some of a shiny sixpence. And I see old Mary Seacum, the famous cry we and war nurse. Whoa. Go see Seacum. <laughs> and you say to her, Seacum, what do you think of Florence Nightingale? Oh, the insults come out. Oh, how far out she is. Oh, what you saying? Oh, she's going fat. Oh, she's not a keen on them. You go, Seacum. Seekum, you must calm yourself, woman. Have a little bit of gin. Sadly, all of the insults didn't stand up to anything. And, uh... It turned out the strongest insult that Mary Seekum could actually come up with was calling her a church bell. Bong! <laughs> well. Well, well, you well. Take, you take the hand, Paul Mary Seekum. Poor Mary C. Poor Mary C. Come, you see her, you come. <laughs> That's terrible. So, drawing five cards. <clears throat> see what's what. So, uh, we've had had our fill. Our fill of J. It's me. It's who? It's me, isn't it? It's him, yeah. It's you. I shouldn't have drawn those cards. Ah, hang on. Oh, Matt, you, you cheat. You, do you know what, Matt? You're a complete hedge creeper. <laughs> Which is also <laughs> one of the insults that Mary Seacombe shouted. Tell you what, I'll get rid of uh, my entire hand and we'll put that back in. When talking there. about uh, Florence Nightingale, uh, what she actually said was that uh, Florence Nightingale was just masquerading as a woman and she, in fact, had a policeman's truncheon underneath her smock. <laughs> and, uh... I say. Uh, yeah, it was quite... And uh, the only other person, apart from Mary Seacombe, who knew, was Queen Victoria. And to tell uh, uh, anyone such a thing would, uh, would be treason. Sorry, it's taken two cards. I didn't mean to do that. And I've lost them. Where have they gone? What card cards? Are oh, there they are. There they are. Come back. Yes. To, to, to tell anyone about this would be treason. And uh, might cause sudden ennui in the person. Ennui. Ennui. 
uh, which is funnily enough the name of uh, Mary Seacombe's first daughter, <laughs> who was also locked up in Newgate Prison for art fraud. And I've run out of cards. You have to give it to him for that. You have wow. to give it to him for that, yeah. Masterful work. Right, so I get... I've already got the patron for... The benefactor. Benefactor, sorry. That's right. uh, I've, I've got the, the ten bonus. crime as well. I'm stuck with crime now, aren't I? You are and I've got the ten person benefactor. I think I've got the person benefactor. Well, you get several bonus pennies as well. So you played two tens, didn't you? Yes. Uh, what else did you play? Seven. Uh, se seven insult. A one. Uh. And a seven for crime as well. Nice. All so yeah, two tens and two sevens. There you go. Have a nice little stack of coins. Oof. Golly, that was quite the uh, quite the adventure. Quite a tale. My one um, criticism about the game, I'd say, is what I just did there, where I cleared my hand. It leaves me sort of redundant. That's 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 not a criticism of the game. That that's hand management. So you basically, if you if you want to have um, things left to challenge other people with, you can't play your entire hand. Oh, I thought I had to play, keep going until I was done. No, no, sorry, stopped. no, no, you're like, you're, you have to do two. Just two. Just two cards. Oh, right. That, explain, oh. that explains your stories now. I that believe. explains why I just go off <laughs> mad. It's been worth it, though. No, sorry, it's only just just, just the uh, just two. I need to play as a minimum. Uh, now I know for... Well, I've been having fun. It's great fun. It's great fun. So, remind me where we were. Um... um Mary Seacombe just revealed that Florence Nightingale had a penis. <laughs> That's not, not Do you know who else had a penis? <laughs> Emily Bronto. I heard. <laughs> you saw that in Bramwell. Use it a lot. And uh, what, what? this explains how we, how we almost got killed on the way home, to be fair, spreading what? malicious rumours and lies like this. But uh, the gentleman I saw down at the club, he uh, he said if I if I spread these seditious rumours about Emily Bronte, he'd give me land and a title, and that was too too great no, an offer no, to play. No, up. no, 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 no. He said he'd give you a fortune and glory. Didn't say land and a title. He said <laughs> fortune and glory, and you you took it, said it, and he never signed on the dotted line. <sighs> Fortune, fortune and, glory. and glory, kid. Fortune and glory. Fortune and glory. So do I take fortune and glory there? Certainly do. Magic uh, flap doodle. Magic uh, indeed. I'll take myself five. And tell you. Oh, Matt's doing some that. furious typing, isn't there? Furious typing. Sorry, I'm I'm Jessica Fletcher from. <laughs> from uh... do, 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 do. <laughs> Well, it turns out well, Emily Bronte didn't actually have a penis then. Well, the funny thing is, Emily Bronte and whatever was there was all kept in the British Museum. All there over history. And there was a big debate. And a I went debate. there. Uh, a debate. And I went there to speak over whether she was indeed a, a, a chap. Or a, a lady chap. A and, lady uh, chap. <laughs> and, and it was said. It was said to me. It was said to me that she was a big burly man, like uh, Williams or uh, or Guthrie, or, yeah, in the signals. And I said, no, no, no. She's a nice bit of crumpet. <laughs> <laughs> nice bit of crumpet. Why did you go Welsh there? Uh, just wondering. Question. Don't know. <laughs> Because Leanne can't be here, we're going to do a bit of Welsh. Why did you go pirate? 
Because uh, I'm a Welsh pirate. <laughs> so I'm sticking at nice bit of crumpet and keeping these on. Sticking to a nice bit of crumpet is not a bad way to go. I'm moving on. What is it me now? It is. It is you, yeah. All right. Let me. Oh, you stupid thing. I love you. Shut up, dog. <clears throat> right, sorry, let me just, uh... <laughs> so can you remind me where we were? Uh, uh, we were in the British Museum in a debate over Emily Bront, where we <laughs> described her as a nice bit of crumpet. Oh, whether she had a right, penis. So... <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. I'm laughing now because I'm a silly billy. Right, um... So, uh, after a bit of, oh, stupid thing. Sorry, it keeps taking two when I mean to take one. So for a, a touch of whimsy, I, uh, pulled out my service revolver. And, well, uh, sir, <laughs> you may have oh. thought that you were pulling out your service revolver, but what it actually had was, what you actually brought to the table that day when faced with Emily Bronte and her personage, I guess, is an umbrella. Her possible uh, I will always be your friend. Took an oath, gonna stick it out to the end. <laughs> Whoops, I don't want that one. So yeah, sorry about that. I can say you got confused though. Oh, it's easily done when you have fits of whimsy. Yes, this is true. Very, very true. It's me. <clears throat> These four cards, and the game ends when we run out of cards in the first deck to draw. Golly, golly, what is going on? So, um, we were at a symposium about Emily Bronte when right. we, we decided... whimsy, I pulled out, I pulled out my umbrella thinking it was a service revolver. Yeah. Do you know the best thing about an umbrella? Do you know what you can use it for? So I heard, uh, that one of the best sort of unconventional uses for, uh, for, for, uh, an umbrella was, uh, actually, uh, Brought about a new nickname for, for myself was uh, Fart Catcher. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you catch it inside the umbrella? Yeah, you save it for later on. <laughs> <laughs> and then you open it on top of someone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you sell it if you, if you forget and you, you kind of open it in some rain, then you get all sorts of different kinds of clouds coming down. It's not good. It's not good at all. Deary, deary me. <laughs> and uh, and the person who gave me this uh, this this monocle, I guess, was the uh, the lady's maid. Which is funny because she's one of the most important women in any household. Was re responsible for combing. So while she was combing my hair of my my plentiful locks, she uh, she said, you know, you'd make a very very good fart catcher. Would you please? <laughs> No, I put it, put it on my curriculum vitae. And all this, all this came about while she was eating cucumber sandwiches, which uh, I'd have preferred a nice bit of crumpet to be fair. But the, uh, the oh, cucumber sandwiches. Oh, they weren't cucumber sandwiches. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. <laughs> they had been left against a fire, and fire had warmed them. They're more like toast. And the scullery maid said, I'll bring you a bit of butter, Denver toast. Denver. What I like is when he went, no, 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 you sound like the Churchill dog. <laughs> I, I, I am. I was the voice for Churchill. No one. I... <clears throat> well. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's upsetting. Right. I pushed it too far. That's what she said. Hey. So, why were we eating toast? Because we we mistook we mistook cucumber sandwiches for toast and there was a maid and fire catcher was mentioned a couple of times. Oh, I remember saying to a maid, I was saying, 
And when the crew comes down, we'll just rob it toast. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. And uh, the poor woman turned to vacancy. Walk in the streets. Walk in the streets. For years and years and years. Uh, and she was. And I encountered her once on in old Kent Road. She was uh, beating up some supporters of a newly minted Ironworks football club. Uh, give him a good chewing, she was. Uh, an act of fuggery. Go down in greatness. I remember uh, she did it. I said, what, what, what are you doing that? For God's sake, woman. What, 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 she's not do anything for the price of a good stiff drink. <laughs> I said, oh. That's where I'll pause. Bravo, sir. Bravo. Uh... <laughs> Uh, after this thuggery, uh, uh, oh, bloody, I can't get used to this. Um, and, uh, because of unmitigated self-interest, I decided it was best to, uh, run off to Buckingham Palace. Oh, I say. Uh, where... I was told that I should go to HMS Warwick, and that's where I'll leave my story. Is it HMS Warwick? It's Warrior. Warrior. Warrior, but it's good skills. Good skills. Someone's been believe... holding cards back. Doing well. <laughs> no, I have not been emptying them. So do I get the... So I've got two tens. Yes, yeah, so you, you, get... you get the weapon one, which is... You that. get four, four bonus points. Points. <clears throat> and I got this is an eight. So you get another bonus coin for that one. So and do I get the green? I get the places person, don't I? Or do you uh, keep yeah, that you, one? You get the so you play the ten, so you get the places uh, benefactor. And what was the ten that you played? Uh, the Michael's already given it to me. The yep. eight of your weapons. Cool. <clears throat> weapons. Golly. I didn't do, draw cards there as well. I should have drawn cards. Oh well. Shall I do it now? Uh, do it. Yeah, do it. Get now. three of them. <clears throat> yeah, it was three. Well, no, I played three, so I should get two. Oof. Go on, Max, you'll go. And I'm just looking at my cards and just, just thinking about what I'm going to do. So, we were on the HMS Warrior, of course. Um,. Lovely ship. It was a lovely ship. Beautiful, beautiful boat full of seamen. <laughs> the best way to handle seamen is with a mangle. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sentence of the day. <laughs> it certainly is. Can we get that put on the box when the game gets made? Yeah. yeah. The best way to handle semen. <laughs> the mangle. <laughs> um, and yes, that 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 caused quite the scandal. Obviously, because you can't be going around. <laughs> Jamie, Jamie, Jamie said clean. that's the best post ever. <laughs> and he said, "Damn it, the box has been printed." It's okay because we're only about an ex expansion, so we can put it on the expansion. <laughs> Demons mangle. <laughs> Where where is this game going to be available? You can you can pre-order it now. Oh, I'm going to have to pre-order it. <laughs> and you, you you should see the uh, so there's an imperial version which comes in a, a silk line wooden box with real Victorian pennies. And yes, I have bought that. <laughs> oh, how much will that retail for? I think it's about one fifty worth every penny. Oh, one pound fifty bargains. <laughs> um. So yes. Um. Given given his reputation for for sort of other things, uh, amongst them communism, the person that came around with this idea for, for mangling semen was Karl Marx. <laughs> <laughs> you got to mention earlier. He did. He did. He's a complete axe wound. <laughs> and uh, and who told him about this? Well, of course, it was the housemaid. Oh. She's seen a fair share of semen over the years. <laughs> 
She's easy to see in this picture. She just. <laughs> where did you go? You went away. <clears throat> so yeah, um, that's 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 this part of the story done. <laughs> <laughs> what was Karl Marx doing? He'd been told about a, a semen mango. Mang mangling by... semen is what he was doing. Yeah. Well, as always, you know, that's what Marxism's about. Bonus coin for me. Some of my cards won't line up with the table when I rotate them. Um, I think it's, it's based on your angle so if you if you put your angle so that so if you right click and drag your mouse you can make yourself go 90 degrees against the um, table <clears throat> and that'll be why Marx and I went back a long way we went back a long way to one time where I'd seen him spitting blood determined to get his revenge on Engels for stealing all his best ideas Revenge. Like, Revenge indeed. Revenge indeed. I said, Carl, Carl, you must calm down. Calm, but his drunken nurse and his Bolshevism had got too far. And in the end, I went to his prison when he was charged, being drunk and charged of a horse. I said, Carl, you must remember to eat more food before you go out. He said, I had plenty of cress. <laughs> cress. <laughs> It's hardly the stuff of a stern, stern stomach. Where was the crest when we had the potted crab? That's what I say. I gave him a steaming pot of coffee. Tried to wake him up. And it was not, not successful. So, I, I end my tale there. I end my tale of drunk Karl Marx. Uh, vowing to get revenge on, or uh, revenge, revenge on. Engels for stealing all his best ideas. Well, you see, uh, what went really well with our, I'll let you get. Um, I wanted to draw. One. Two. So I'm just doing counting. <laughs> Three. Um, so, uh, I, uh, I said to, I, uh, I said to, uh, I said to Carl, well, why, why do you do such things? Why do you, which benefactor is this that's left? Uh, Insult, I'm just looking to see if anybody, Michael should have it, I think. Oh, yeah. Which one is it? Insult. Oh, yeah, for Michael, definitely. Um, he says, I do this for the good of the poor. The good of the poor? Oh, sorry. I do it for the the the, um, the, the, the good of the poor. And uh, I... Uh, <laughs> uh, I often think of the poor somewhat like a rubber duck, <laughs> floating <laughs> and, and never quite reaching their potential. Uh, because of uh, <laughs> because of all their, their because of all their pickpocketing, and uh, I said to him, uh, I, I, I said to him, Carl, do you know anyone who writes well about the poor? And he says, he, he, well, he said yes, and obviously he spoke in a German accent, which I won't do now because it would be insulting. And he said that Charles Dickens does, and I said, oh well, that's where I'm going to leave my story. Oh well, it wasn't Charles Darwin after all. It was oh Charles Darwin. I meant to say Charles Darwin. <laughs> yes, he was drunk, Charles. Yes. I meant to say Charles Darwin. It was uh, it was actually Christabel Pankhurst. Wow. Oh, and she's just she's just drunk. gone underneath. Uh, what she doing? She's she underneath done. Darwin. <laughs> <laughs> the strongest cold one there. That was ironic. The mangling semen. Not... It's not good. <laughs> Christabel Pankhurst. I'm, I'm assuming it's the Relation to Emily is uh, again maybe I should probably read upon some Victorian law. Yes. Sylvia, Emily, Christabel, and somebody else were. Camera. So she was a child internment camp advocate. Is that that she advocated that they should be more child <laughs> internment camp? That's a lockdown idea and a half, isn't it? What's um? What benefactor is that? Have you got there? Servant benefactor. Uh. Oof. 
Yes. Got it in the wrong place and I actually been there. That's true, I have, I have, thank you. So, what we got? We've got seven cards left. So, I... Oh, she wanted to lock up children. It's Emily's daughter. Jamie and Oh, but We need, we need... So I think every game of this needs, needs a Jamie to take part just to kind of have all the... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Have, have all the Victorian... Um, history and everything. <clears throat> it's good. Siri thinks I'm talking to it. I'm not. My gosh. Where were we? We were... So, there was... Emily and Pankhurst. What was that? Christine... Christabel. Christabel. <sighs> After all the excitement of the, uh, of the last few hours, Christabel sat everybody down and she said, the best thing we can do now is all sit down for a cup of tea. Which has been stolen by the uh, song from the Chinese, grown by the Indians and drunk by the British, which makes it the best, best thing in the world, is tea. We love a bit of tea. Um, when obviously tea and, and the Chinese and the Indians brings me on to uh, another story I heard once. Surrounding an Amazonian blowpipe, which, uh... <laughs> yeah. That's a sound effect. It was a very good sound effect. That's the sound it made as it whizzed past my ear. Oh, and I, uh, I managed to upset, uh, a gentleman. Well, I thought he was a gentleman, but actually he was, uh, he was a lady. And you couldn't really tell. Um... We're having a lot of mistaken gin. Yeah, there's, 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 a, there's a lot of a lot of gin involved. A lot of gin involved. But um, there was uh, William Gladstone was here at this time as well, and he uh, he came uh, he came running past me after chasing after this guy uh, or a girl with the Amazonian blowpipe, brandishing a sword stick. Which is uh, obviously a sword hidden in a walking stick, which every fine gentleman should should have. And uh, he was chasing after the gamekeeper and calling them a wagtail. <sighs> <sighs> yes. No complaints from me. Tea time. When you tea time, go ask tea time, innit? See what's going on. Uh, weapon. Person. Weapon as well. Servant again. All the servants. And. Insult. Uh, so there was a 10. <clears throat> These are two bonus coins for me. See, I knew. I knew Gladstone. Back from the old days. Back, uh, back when we were in Oeton together. And he got me a few works at the foreign office. Old school Thai network, you know. And so when he told me that he was chasing down the blowpipe one, because it was his governess. His governess, and she'd quite gone mad. And she was doing bloody murder. Bloody murder, I said. What caused it, William? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but I think she has an overly tight corset. <laughs> overly tight corset. That is my card. <clears throat> that is your card. So, obviously, the bus deck's empty. Um, and I can't remember. Jamie, does everybody get one last turn that's got cards, or is the game sort of ended now uh, because there's there's no more cards? Or can Matt play out his cards and get points still if he's got anything left? It's ended, but we can finish the story if we want. So, have you got anything to, to finish off the story with, Matt? Uh, well, and the thing was, uh, this whole situation was almost the death of me. And I have very much enjoyed recounting it to you both over 
Devonshire scones with heaps of cream. <laughs> there you go. Very nice. Very that nice. was a conclusion. That was great, guys. Thank you. <clears throat> so, now we're on to final scoring. So, they go off over there. Whee! So, we get... Um, we basically count up the... You get two bonus coins for each of the benefactor cards that you have. Um, so, I'm going to put mine just around here somewhere. <clears throat> and then, you get two bonus pennies for having the most... Um, cards in a suit but I believe that you also get bonus pennies for playing the highest card of a suit I'm sure Jamie can uh, can advise on that as well and if uh, the <clears throat> you can actually click on you see the little um, little piece of paper with the lines on it on the bottom left if you click that yes. it brings up the in-game rules which is handy uh. I can't read. Um, That's a shame. You did so well with your cast to say you can't read. It was oh, no. really well. So you get two bonus cases. pennies for each ten. Uh, you get no. So let's have a look at the end game scoring. Do, 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 do. So you obviously got you got the bonus pennies as you played the tens. Um, so we separate all the pocketed bonus cards into separate suits and count up. A uh, number of cards in the suit. The player who pocketed the highest number of cards in each of the suits should receive two bonus pennies. If there's a tie, you get one bonus penny each. Um, and you get two bonus we, pennies for every benefit. Should we just card. go through the suits then? Yes. yes. Yeah, so right. highest card is the same bonus. It's the same thing. Oh, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, yeah it is. All right, so sorry, what was it again? So so it's two two bonus pennies for every benefactor. And two bonus yep. pennies for the most in the suit. Because obviously if you've got the benefactor, then you've played the highest card in that suit anyway. So, right, so if, we, if we start with crime, I've got... Crime. Someone must have... You've got the 10, Matt. I've got the 10. And Matt, you've got... Have you got... I don't think I've got a single crime card. No, I've not right, got right, so in that suit. I've got three. So, so I've get, got three. So, we'll so get, we get one each. One, one each, each, yeah. Okay. Weapons. I have three. I also have three. I have um one. Where are my, where are my weapons? One, yeah. So that's a bonus that was a point each for us. Place. I have one. I also have one. And I Michael have... has bloody loads. Four. Four. So that's two for me. Tea time, I have two. Michael's got about seven. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ball <clears throat> on tea time. Uh, object, I have three. I have two. Uh, object, yellow. Yeah. Uh, yes. I have, yeah, I have, I have two. two. I have two. So Matt gets the two bonus. Yeah. Um, perils, I've got three. I had one. I've got myself four perils. Oh, nice. Nice. I've been in peril. How do you stack the coins? Um, if you highlight them all, <clears throat> and then you sort of drag them over over the stack um, until it goes kind of orange. So you, get it if you so if you move your stack, just over, oops, move your stack. Oh, oh yeah, I know. I've got it now. Have you got it now? Right, cool. Yeah, I've got it. You... <clears throat> Yep, yeah, so um, one, two, three persons. I've got four peoples. I have two peoples. I don't think I've got that many. I've got one person. Cool, I got the two for that. Um, servants, I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got three. Cool. Uh, insults, I've got three. I've just got for one. It was a goodie. Uh, is there any that I've missed that I've not got? Motive? Did we do motive? Uh, I don't have any motives. I've got two. I've got four. There you go. Very motivated. Wow. And uh, did we do... We did place, we did weapon, we did tea time, we did object, we did insult, we did person. 
did we did motive, we did servant, we did crime, so that is all of it. That is the I game. Have... have you got your bonus pennies for your uh, benefactors? Yeah, yep. I have. Cool, let me I just have. log a play on BG stats so I can get these game things recorded. And I can add uh I can add Matt finally to uh, to my game list of people I've played with. Yeah, yeah. Finally played a game in a lockdown, despite the fact we're hundreds of miles apart. 